Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and the start of a new season of Kerbal Space Program. And this one is going to be TFC First Contract because that's right, 0 0.24 has been released. And as an extra special bonus, I am running the Windows 64 bit build of KSP. And so far, I have to say, its performance has been awesome. Yes, there are a few bugs in it, but I'm pretty sure they're going to get worked on and fixed as soon as possible. Well, I know Squat's going to work on them and fix them as soon as they possibly can. Some of them are related to the Unity engine, which they're going to have to wait until that gets fixed before they can do anything. In any event, in point 24, we have three game modes. We have the classic sandbox, where you have everything right from the start. There's no science restrictions or anything like that. We have science mode, which is what in point 23 and point 23.5 point was career, known as career mode. And then we have career mode, where we have not only science, but funding, reputation, contracts, and all that good stuff. So. Let's select a flag for this. Frankly, I have a hard time picking a flag because while a lot of these are great, actually they're all great, especially these new ones that were put in for the individual companies and whatnot, but someday I want to have a uniquely my own flag to use for my own stuff here. In the meantime, I'm just going to stick with the Kerbin flag. So we'll take that, and then we will start the new contracting career mode. We've got our available funds. We have $10,000 to start with. Now, I'm not sure. Last I heard, I think they were going to call the currency just funds. Uh, some people want to call it Kerbucks or any number of other things. Me. I'm just going to call it dollars because it's all dollars and cents to me. And then, of course, we have our reputation meter. You want this over here in the green. You want a positive reputation. And, of course, this is the science information. Have a look at R&D right from the start. Start off, we have, I think, a little bit more stuff than we had before. We've got the FT200 fuel tank, uh, the capsule... The L LVT-30, and all well, these are uh, the uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux parts, antenna. Okay, maybe not a whole heck of a lot. The first one gets decoup stack decouplers in the second tier now, and so on. And so the first thing to do is to start out with getting some initial science to get things moving. Now, I want to try to get science tree filled out as quickly as I can because frankly I've got a lot of uh, I've got several what I think are reasonably cool ship designs that I was able to save from previous seasons that do work in this version and I want to get enough science to be able to use them. So Kerbal Space Program just crashed. All right, we're back. Crash recovered. All right, let's get our first ship command pod, and we'll start getting our first local science right here at Kerbal Space Center. Okay. First thing we do, let's grab a crew report. And then we will we'll EVA, get an EVA report, keep that, and let's see, if I recall correctly, we can store the current experiment. And you can now let go, and now we can get another EVA report, and a surface sample from the launch pad. Keep that. All right. Grab hold. Store those experiments. 
Okay, let go. And now we waddle over this way. onto the grass and let's get another SERPA sample from KSC this time and an EVA report. Grab that and now waddle back to the capsule store those experiments And now, I'm going to waddle back out here again. And this time, we're going over to the runway. And we're going to get an EVA report, a surface sample from the runway. And then we'll take another trip out to the east, to the point where we're just stepping into the water, and get an EVA report and surface sample from Kerbin Shores. That will be enough science to unlock a couple of uh, nodes in the tech tree. And uh, then we'll go from there and see about launching our first actual flight that goes off the ground and taking contracts. Now, uh, because I want to try to do as much of this as, as I can, I'm probably going to uh, do a lot of time acceleration and cuts and so on just to kind of pack as much in as I can all right we're almost back and on the way back I've been thinking about it and I realized that if I have him take a walk to the west of the Space Center a little ways, we can get some science from Kerbin's grasslands. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And for that, I will just uh, use a combination of Jeb can't walk around corners, apparently. Ugh. Use a combination of speed up and a cut. We've got 10 data in there already, so I'm going to head on off over that way, west of the Space Center, and gather up some more science from Kerbin's grasslands. And I'll make a cut to where I arrive there, and another cut getting back to the launch pad. All right, checking back in because we have arrived at Kerbin's Tundra, just from simply walking straight to uh, straight west from the Space Center. So we get a surface sample and an EVA report from here. And since I don't believe we can do another one of either until we get back, it is now time for Jeb to start walking. 9.4 kilometers back to the launch pad. We'll see you there. All right. Jeb is almost back to the launch pad. And while he's getting there, I wanted to point out that uh, I have added a little bit here. I had already added, but just now, recently during a break, I enabled Final Frontier on the uh, toolbar here and this one records a record of first of accomplishments like uh, for example he's going to be he is the first curb and surface EVA and it shows that he's currently on a mission and so on and it keeps track of all of this stuff and I've got it set up in the configuration, I've set it up to use the FAR calculations when possible. I may change some of these things just to be a little bit more uh, in line with what I want to do. But that's really handy. Another handy thing that I installed during the break is the in-game notepad. That's just 
that's just too good to not have. But in the meantime, it's time for Jeb to reboard the capsule. And it is time to recover the ship and all of this wonderful, delicious science. And here we are. Mission summary. Endurance Ribbon. Uh, he spent three hours. It was a little over three hours on EVA to walk all over there to that place. So he got an Endurance Ribbon. He got a Time Ribbon. Two hours spent in EVA. He got... And the first surface ribbon, more than two minutes, more than two hours, three hours, whatever. Okay, that's good. And uh, all right, we'll close that. Now here we've picked up 67.9 science on this mission from all of this. That is excellent. That is an excellent first mission. And now we go next, and we recovered the command pod and the monopropellant of all aboard it. So we've got 600 funds report recovered from that, the full cost of the pad of the launch, because we recovered it right at the launch pad. And then finally, of course, Jebediah is next on the mission. All right, as far as uh, crew is concerned, we'll head into R&D here. As far as crew is concerned, uh, one of the reasons for the notepad is I'm going to maintain and enforce a rotation of crew. All right, let's get this one, obviously. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get that node for 20 science, and we'll get this node for 18 science, and we'll pick up this one for 15 science. And now we've got Tier 2 all filled out after one mission. That's pretty good. And Tier 3 has got some wonderfully juicy parts on it that we'll be adding soon. This is the tier for 45 science each. Okay. Now, let's head over here to the astronaut complex and see who we've got. Oh, I like this guy. No stupidity. All right, and... This one, he's not too bright, but we'll take him anyway. And now I'm going to take a moment and set up my crew rotation roster, and then we'll start setting up for contracts. Okay, here we are in the newly opened mission control facility where we have our contracts available. Now, the first, these are the first starter contracts. Okay. Launch a new vessel. We'll accept mm -hmm. that contract. That should be no problem. Altitude record of five kilometers. That will be no problem. Escape the atmosphere. Also, no problem. And I'm thinking might just be able to achieve orbit. Now, about the contracts. This briefing text up here is procedurally generated and may or may not make any sense. So I'm probably not going to pay too much attention to it. Uh, and this is the flag or logo of the agency that is doing it. And this is the world first record keeping society. You get exceptional prestige and it shows down here you get for comp advance of $14,764 for doing it. For completion, you get 59055 You get 30 science from doing this mission and 142 reputation. For failure, it will cost you 18750 It does not expire, so we'll just go ahead and accept that contract. Okay, we've taken all the contracts. They're showing right here in the active tab. This is the archive tabs where all completed contracts will be listed as well as failed or cancelled. Alright, so now to the vehicle assembly building. Alright, time to build our first ship. Now one thing I have to say is that they've rearranged the VAB a little bit. Uh, you've got your funds counter down here. This is available funds. The money I had plus rewards for the and so on. Uh, refunds for recovering everything. And, 
so on on that first mission, plus advances on the contracts, which show up here. Click that to keep it open, and scroll up and down through this, and you can also click on these things to open and close them. And uh, that should not be a problem at all. So we'll close that for right now. This shows right up here the current cost so far of the ship you're designing. I go ahead and click on the command pod. You see it costs 600. And 600 appears there when I add the command pod to the ship. Now the default view has been switched off to an angle. I'm not quite sure I care for that personally. I would rather have it start out straight on like this. But uh, so much for that. Anyway, okay. We need a ship that can basically reach orbit. I think we would not have any big problem doing that. Alright. Now we don't have uh, any reaction wheels or control stuff yet, so we have to be a little bit careful. Alright. Slap on FLT 400. And I'm going to use T-45s because they have gimbling. Let's see, what do we have for parachutes? Okay, we've unlocked the radial chute. So I think I'm going to use a pair of radial chutes. This way it'll lay that stage down on, the, on its side when it lands and have a better chance of not destroying the engine, which is, if we look up here, the T-45 costs 950 bucks, so we don't want to destroy that if we can help it. Alright. So this part of the ship up here, all the way down to the capsule, I'm expecting to return all of that. All right, and let's have a look at our delta V. We need 4,500 to get to orbit. All right. This should actually be fairly straightforward. And another T-45 gambling down there. The aerodynamic. Uh, I'm not particularly thrilled about these because they're not all that steerable. I don't know. I might try using them. I don't know, 500. I don't know if I want to. We'll see. Right. What do we got for radial decoupler? Let's just use two of these and we'll drop a couple of these cheap RT-10s on here. I think I'm going to be using a fair amount of solid boosters because they are dirt cheap, comparatively speaking. Alright, now we have to fix the staging. That down here. Our T10s burn out and then they get jettisoned. And then that separates. And this engine lights up. We should, I'm thinking, should be able to reach orbit with this ship. Now, do we have any science stuff available? We've got a good containment unit and an antenna. Uh, let's see. Good containers, okay. Let's see, where's our... Okay, let me separate that. Turn on center of mass. No, center of mass. Alright. 
take these off temporarily. A pair of good containers. And a parachute, a parachutes, a pair of parachutes right here at the center of mass for this stage. Now we hook this up, turn center of mass off. Alright, how's our delta V? 4700. I think we won't have any problem reaching orbit. Alright, now, see, no launch clamps, obviously, so one thing I want to do is grab these and move them down a bit as low as I can get away with. Yeah, okay, that'll be about the best we can manage there. All right. Double check staging. Yes, I've got the uh, part highlighter in. I've got the editor extensions installed as well. All oh, very... Oh, it reset the sta Oh, there's something about the staging that sometimes resets the whole thing when you start changing stuff. And of course, this reset button resets the staging to whatever KSP thinks the default should be. Which, in my opinion, from my case, is almost never. Alright. Give this thing a name. Orbiter 1. I know, it's a really creative original name, isn't it? Okay, we're off to the launch pad. Okay, SAS on, which is at the moment doing nothing but driving for the electric charge on the gimbling and whatnot on the uh, capsule. Okay, so actually, I need to rearrange the staging here. It just occurred to me. This thing can lift off on those SRBs alone. It does not need this engine to fire right away. All right. Let's throttle this up. I am going to use my flight stats information because I like having numbers to describe what's going on. And let's rock. Okay, looking good climbing really fast. Let's begin a very little bit of pitch over. Which it isn't doing very easily because... Okay. Now we've got some authority from the gimbling on that engine. Climbing fast, apoapsis climbing fast. I think orbit is not going to be a problem. And also, up here, if I switch to that, the one items in that list that have turned green are contracts that have been successfully completed. Pitching over some more. Get an apoapsis a little over 70 kilometers. We'll cut the engines. Or engine, singular, I should say. Okay, we're up over 70 kilometers. Cut engine. Pitch over to the horizon, which is a lot slower without thrust going. Okay, let's close that, hop out here, and let's drop a maneuver node at the apoapsis. And see if we can 
get this thing into orbit. Okay, smaller increments. Seventy-five by seventy-three orbit. Seven, okay, seventy-five by seventy-five orbit. All righty, that's going to work just great. Get my numbers back up here. Align with the maneuver node and begin burning immediately. Okay, we've escaped atmosphere and we will soon light up the achieved orbit. And yeah, we can resize this window a little bit. I wish we could resize it this way and grab a hold of it here and undock it and move it and pin it to where we want. Perhaps that will come in a future version. Periaps is coming up. We're about to lose this first stage, which will be fine. Kind of expected that. That that would not be recovered. Okay. Final stage. Periapsis is coming up fast now. And we have plenty of fuel available for this. Oops, I forgot to set camera to free mode before launch. Apoapsis is now 376 kilometers. Periapsis 74 kilometers, and we have fulfilled the fourth contract of achieving orbit. All right. And we still have lots of fuel left. And so, you know what? I, I forgot to rotate the crew. Good night. Jebediah should not have been on this mission. This should have been Bill's mission. Because Bill was next on the top of the list, and Jeb had been moved to the bottom. Well, I'll have to remember to check that. And, of course, we can actually see what's going on on the night side, because thanks to the raised minimum ambient lighting mod, let's turn SAS off and save what little bit of power we have available. All right. Do a mystery goo report. And we'll save that. And I'm going to save the other one for whenever we land. Do a crew report. There's another five science. Keep that. Jeb gets to go EVA. And we get space just above Kerbin's water. Five, eight science. Keep that. Go back aboard. Now I've got one thing that I figured out from Mech Jeb. One of the things that it makes available, the reasons that I like Mech Jeb, is the ability to make custom information windows. And this information window is worth its weight in gold. It tells you what biome you're over. Raw biome shores, current biome, space just above Kerbin. Or probably space just above Kerbin's shores. Let me trip this just to see that. Yeah, in space near Kerbin, dump that. We don't want to duplicate it. All right. So I will orbit until this changes. And that will give me a better idea of what biome I'm over so that I will know that, I, that it's time to do another EVA. Like, for example, when we get over this land here, Grass, oh, grasslands, grasslands. Oh, I was going, okay, a very small area. We'll get more over here. But you see now, there's no more guesswork about when to do an EAEVA report. Just above curb and grasslands. Store the data. Get back on board. Orbit until this changes. Okay, we've got another one. Highlands. EVA report. Store that. Get back on board. And so on.
And so, this should permit gathering a lot of science with a lot less of the guesswork. You don't have to do all 87 EVAs to find out, oh, I'm still in a place I've already been, because you've got something that tells you. I mean, this is carbon for crying out loud. They ought to know what biomes are where, and so on. You could, you know, have instrumentation like a telescope or a pair of binoculars where they could look outside and see what kind of terrain they're over, which would apply anywhere, actually. In any event, I'm going to use it. And oh, I should have killed that maneuver. No, we don't need it. Okay, grasslands again, highlands again. And if I'm not mistaken, we should get, if I look out here, we'll get deserts as well. And I'm going to continue to orbit until Kerbal Space Center is in daylight because I want to try to set down as close to the Space Center as possible. Because one of the things that controls how much you get refunded for parts that you land is how close it is to Kerbal Space Center. And the farther away it is, the lower the percentage of what you recover. So. I'm going to orbit a while until it is time to do a re-entry burn and I'm going to grab whatever science I can along the way. Okay, here we are. An hour and 16 minutes into this first orbital flight around Kerbin. And quite a bit of science has been acquired. We do a review stored science data here. We've got just above Kerbin's deserts. We've got above Kerbin's water, space just above, space just above the grasslands, ju space just above the highlands, in space high over Kerbin, because this orbit has a uh, like 300,000 kilo 300 kilometer apple apsis, so we get the high, in, high over Kerbin item, and EVA a port just over Kerbin's mountains, and plus there is also a crew report on there. So we're done pretty good for a first science mission. And now, if we look over here, Kerbal Space Center is coming into daylight. So I'm going to drop a maneuver node, say here about the periapsis, I think. And we'll plot a course to take us back. Let's see, we've got how much DV? 915. That should be more than enough. By a lot. Alright, a smaller increment. And maybe a little bit less. Okay, yeah. I think that should allow for planetary rotation as we come around to a burn. Alright. Let's go ahead and all right, find controls on, lined up. Okay, we're on the maneuver node. Time warp. A short seven second burn is all it's going to take. Getting close. Yeah, planetary rotation is doing about what I kind of expected. Whoa, 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 okay. All right, this burn is not time critical, so we're still good. And let's do it. And here we go. Let's burn just a little bit more. That looks good right there. Has us coming down in the water off KSC, and we have enough fuel, we can do a little bit more braking if we need to. But that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, get down below 70, it'll kill the time warp. We'll go do some, uh, let's see, let's turn that off, the SAO. I can't, uh, now I can. 
Let's roll heads up. Got lined up on retrograde. And we're coming in. We've got a good bunch of science. So this should advance the space program very nicely. And absolutely, Bill flies the next mission. No more of this mission hogging by Jab. Everybody gets a chance to fly, even if they're a dummy. Time warp in a little bit. Get down to about 40 kilometers, back off the time warp, and see where our orbit prediction is going. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. I think this is going to be very, very good. Not very far from the Space Center at all. See, here's the island with that extra runway. Get back on the retrograde. Coming in over the mountains west of the Space Center. Getting our uh, re-entry effect going. Ready to fire the parachutes. All right, how is this going? All right, I'm zoomed in already as far as I can. And who knows? We might even touch down on the Space Center grounds. Maybe. Or in the water just next to it. We are. All right, TAS must be what replaced surface before. Okay, that's good. Alright, let's speaking of surface, let's have our surface altitude. Distance from the terrain. To me it only makes sense. Okay, we're coming down on land. Absolutely. Short of the space center, but close enough to it we should get a fairly high percentage of recovery. Ready to activate chutes at about four kilometers, I think. There we go. We can turn off the SAS now. We might need just a little bit of engine thrust just before touchdown. We'll see. Okay, it's going to set it down upright. Not sure I'm thrilled about that. 7.9 meters per second. Uh, in fact, I'm not thrilled about that. I'd rather it lay the thing down. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So let's just go for straight up. A little bit of thrust at the very end to gentle the impact, and maybe it'll just stand there on the engine bell. Eighty meters from the surface. Oh no. Okay, it fell over, but that's okay. Nothing broke. What's our biome? Urban Highlands. Okay, we didn't get a surface sample from that before, so we can do it now. Mystery goo. All right, we'll save that. Go EVA. And he may not get back aboard the ship, I don't know. We'll do another EVA report and a surface sample from here. Now, let's see if we can get him back on the ship. Nope. 
Okay. We'll recover Jeb, and then we'll recover the ship from the space center. Okay. Zebediah Kerbin has earned a bunch of them. Solid fuel booster ribbon. First Kerbal in space. First Kerbal orbit. Fast orbit. First EVA in space. And so on and so forth. Okay. I think I might just turn that summary off. Okay. 11.4 science so far. And we got Jeb back. All right. Let's hop in here to the tracking station. And we'll switch to the ship, we'll fly it, and we'll hit recover, and we'll see what we get from this. All right. 76 science on this part of the mission. And for parts, we get seven parts, three resources. We get the uh, fuel, oxidizer, and monopropellant. We get refunded for the parts of that that we didn't use. And 96.5% val value because it was only 32 kilometers from the space center. And there's no crew aboard. Our funds now 125,884. That is awesome. And we have 147 science. So let's rock the science. Okay. Well, let's just not make any pretense about it. We're unlocking that. And we're unlocking this, and we're unlocking that. And this tier three is almost completely unlocked. Okay. I should have unlocked this one before some of these others, but that's all right. I'll get it very soon. All righty. We are progressing very nicely, and we will progress more in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here.